Right, let's get to Chelsea then. They've taken their spending to more than £600 million since, of course, Todd Bowley and his led consortium was bought the club back in May. It was capped off by the British record deal on deadline day for Enzo Fernandes for £106.8 million. Pounds. Darren. Uh, Jürgen Klopp said about this, and he was joking that he'd need a lawyer in order to speak about it. He didn't want to get himself into trouble. But what's your view on it in terms of the spending? I've got two views, really. Um, one is that I don't have a problem with it at all. It's not the first time we've seen it in the Premier League. It won't be the last. First time we've seen it on this scale. Not really. I mean, if you think about... Uh, 320 million in a month. If you think about um, uh, Chelsea, when uh, Jose Mourinho arrived, and they were buying players left, yeah. right and centre, uh, and... Clearly, with inflation, the prices have gone <laughs> inflation up. Inflation a little bit, yes. Well, well, well exactly. Yeah. But I think as far as uh, Chelsea are concerned, there are lots of people who criticise it, but I think there is... And I was at the game on Friday night uh, against Fulham. I'll talk more about that in a second, but I remember writing my match report that there is not a fan in the country who, if you offered them, if the owners said, yeah. look, we're going to rip up the side mid-season, they're not doing well enough, we're 10th in the league, and we're going to bring in more better players, give them the second half of the season to bed in, really go again for next season. You tell me a supporter who would say, no, you put your money away. Let's not do that. I well, think you say that, but there are some fans that think, actually, you've given Graham Potter quite a headache here because he's kind of, kind of got to incorporate all this. kind of keep 34 it's egos yeah, happening. Absolutely. But it's the kind of problem every manager would love to have. Mm. There are some players who are not going to be there uh, next season. They, at the end of the season, they're going to go. Um, but there are lots of good young players. Mm -hmm. And I don't subscribe to the idea that it, it's a scattergun approach. There are players that provide an upgrade in every position. Uh, I, I think as far as the other... To, listen, Martin Samuel does a terrific piece today all about the spending, and he says, if you look at Liverpool, uh, they are owned by venture capitalists as well, as Chelsea are, but the difference is Chelsea are providing the adventure. Chelsea are really going for it, whereas a lot of people would like Liverpool to spend, particularly in midfield, on the scale that Chelsea are spending at the moment. And I'm not criticising them or anyone else. Um, I, I just think as far as Chelsea are concerned... We in the Premier League, we, we, we seem to view owners who come in with deep pockets and ironically do what they promise they're going to do with suspicion. But if you look at Chelsea, they, they spent, they won the league, they dominated English football for quite some time. Mm. You look at City, they came in, they spent, they dominated English football, they continue to dominate English football as it stands at the moment. Arsenal are better for the investment in their team uh, from their owners. The, the fans obviously wanted them to do it. So it... it Yes, there have been cases where people have mismanaged money. We look at Everton, we look at a couple yeah. of other clubs as well. But as far as Chelsea are concerned, they're putting their money where their mouth is. And had they not done that, we'd have been sat here yeah. criticising yeah. them. They, I mean, they had to in some yeah. respects because when they bought the club, it was something like £2.4 billion initially and then it was going to be four That's right, in yeah. total. £1.75, I think, they had to invest. So is this them just doing this what is they, this is them uh, yeah. put, putting their money where their mouth yeah, is quite absolutely. literally yeah and the scattergun thing i mean you compare it to liverpool but liverpool after loris carrius had a couple of shockers in the champions league final, like we need a goalkeeper let's go out and get the very best one in the business alison becker we need a center half let's go and get virgil van dyke so there was much more of a sort of focused target to their spending mm -hmm. chelsea just seems like oh let's get him let's get him let's get him oh we'll have him as well there doesn't seem to be any sort you of think so? Well, did they need Enzo Fernandez? Did they? Yes, they did because uh, N'Golo Kante can't stay fit. Well, that's true. Jorginho's and... contract is running down. Kovacic okay, can't do right. it by himself. Um... Zachariah's <laughs> only in on loan. Jorginho so, yeah. went off to Arsenal. But, but, but they still don't have a striker. I saw still it on have Friday have night. They still don't have a striker and they still can't score goals. And they're only one recognised fit striker. They've left out of their Champions League squad. Yeah, well, I, I, do you know what? I, there's, there's a really good article in the Mail on Sunday today by Rob Draper, which I'd encourage you to Everyone's read. Everyone's doing the papers but me. <laughs> <laughs> because, because what I would have said when Chelsea were spending all this money is that it seems very un Graham Potter esque to me. So what I really admired yeah. Graham Potter at Brighton was Brighton have got an incredible scouting and recruitment. Yeah. Well, they we that's why that. they were Paul Wynn Stanley. They took him with them, didn't they? For Chelsea? Yeah. So it's you know. So they go and they they go and buy these pe players you've never heard of, and they turn them into absolute superstars. Mm -hmm. And that's what Graham Potter's done so well at Brighton. Whereas now he's been given all these superstars, all these young players. Mm -hmm. And it just seemed to me that that didn't fit. But Rob Draper makes a very good point here that actually 
in Todd Bowling's eyes, Graham Potter is integral to what they're doing there because he is so good at coaching young players. And right. he brings up the point that Chelsea have tried something similar before when they signed Ed Hazard, Torgan Hazard, Kevin De Bruyne, Mo Salah, Thibaut Courtois and Romelu Lukaku in a 30-month period. The difference then was that Jose Mourinho was the manager and he likes battle-hardened, experienced pros rather than young teams that he has to improve. So actually... Rob Draper's completely changed my mind because maybe Graham <laughs> Potter is exactly the man you want in there to mould this young squad because they are young. Mudrick, Fernandez, you know, they've got bags of potential. Mm. But it's, it's, it's not going to happen overnight with Chelsea, is it? It's a lot of money. And, and, you know, if you look at just Chelsea alone, I was, I was staggered by this. You know, they spent more than all the combined leagues. Yeah, Liga, Liga yeah. Bundesliga, La Liga, yeah. Syria. I mean, you look at La Liga, they only spent £25 million. Pounds. It seems like a drop in the ocean, doesn't it? Potentially to what the Premier League spent actually was yeah. £815 million pounds in January alone. It's a phenomenal amount. Pep Guardiola was interested in this because he sort of said, if Manchester City had been doing this, he felt that perhaps it would have raised a few more eyebrows. What are the papers saying about it? And we know what Rob Draper thinks. Uh, well, uh, the papers actually answer one of your questions. Uh, I want to show you the sun because they say that uh, it's raining men. Um, <laughs> and uh, they, uh, the headline refers to the Napoli striker um, uh, Victor, Victor Osman. Osman. He's 24 years of age. Um, I would imagine a few Chelsea fans would be saying hallelujah to that one, sorry. Oh, well done, name. you had sorry. to. <laughs> <laughs> I only just got it, that is good, very well done, yeah. Um, I was quite proud of that. Yeah, I'm annoyed um, I didn't think of it first. <laughs> he's 24 years of age, he's scored 15 times in 20 games so far this season. He is actually quite rough and mean, and I think he, is, he would answer that question. I was at the game on Friday, they, uh, the approach play was fantastic, they looked a terrific side, but they just couldn't have anyone who could put the ball into the net. Yeah, they still couldn't get past Fulham, so there's, you know... After well, indeed, that, you know. And, and that's yeah. exactly the point that Robbie Fowler makes in his piece, in his column in the Sunday Mirror. He's says for all the money that they've bought they have not brought in somebody and some people say as I said that uh, Joao Felix can't come back soon enough but what Fowler says is that he's not a natural number nine um, he says Kyle Havertz is not a number nine either uh, Mando Broya is injured and Aubameyang has been confined to the bench and left out of the Champions League so they do need a forward I don't agree necessarily about the whole messing around on championship manager thing I think that there is a strategy to what Chelsea are doing they have a team for the next five years and I think once they do get that final piece of the jigsaw they're going to be a force to be reckoned with Romano Lukaku was the final piece of the jigsaw once upon a time but anyway we haven't yeah. got time to discuss that yeah.